All right, chaps. Uh, just going to finish off uh, the Weber DCOE rebuild with um, balancing. Uh, sorry, uh, setting the float height. All right. Uh, this is the um, Ferrari 365 GTC slash four uh, Weber carburetor specification from Weber in Italy. Uh, this is an old document that's just been printed now. Uh, 38 DCOE 59 to 60. Okay, so they've got three carburetors at 59 and the other three are 60. All this does is um, um, basically this is how Weber provided the carburetors to Ferrari uh, with the levers uh, on the correct side. Well, three levers are on the right hand side, the other three are on the left or something like that. And also the fuel unions, I believe. So that's uh, yeah, that's basically generic to identify these carburetors. Uh, down here we have the uh, all the part numbers of all the different exploded parts, and um, we are going to work on the brass float now. And uh, I've also printed the the rest of the part numbers here. So that's all from the page before. It's all in Italian, and this tells you how to um, set the float height of the um, on the top cover. I don't know how to? Uh, yeah, there we go. All you really need to know is where it says 11.5 and five. Um, the five is the five millimeter gap between the bottom of the float and the surface of the top cover, but you have to include the the, ga the gasket, okay? And 11.5 is the distance between the bottom of the float and the top cover surface when the brass float is fully open, the needle valve is fully open. So you need to adjust so the float only goes, uh, only closes at 5 mil. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'm going to uh, get on with this. So th this is a little tool you can buy. Uh, from us it is um, there's a few of these this measures between five and six mil okay so and it's also got this little um, gap there uh, machined into it it's aluminium this is used to bend and adjust the tangs of the float so as to get the right uh, um, measurement and these gaps here are basically to slide under the float this is where the float seams go through Anyway, I'm going to uh, get on with this now. So here's the carburetor. I'm going to remove the top cover. This is to regulate the flow of fuel uh, into the carburetor so as. Um, to avoid flooding or starvation, fuel flooding or starvation. So, as the fuel fills up, the buoyant um, float uh, rises, uh, which is attached to the um, needle valve, and the needle valve uh, is basically a, a valve that, when it's pushed into its uh, socket or whatever it's called it it stops the fuel coming in and then as you use the fuel the float drops which means the fuel starting to come back in again and depending on the demand of your right foot uh, and the delivery of the pump this keeps adjusting and fuel yeah that looks pretty rude anyway that's what we do here so lift the top cover up and off Um, some car some Weber carburetors require you to measure and set the float with the gasket in place. The rule of thumb is, if you have to remove the float to remove the gasket, then you have to measure with the gasket. If it's a carburetor that the gasket is removable without removing the float, measure it without the gasket. So. The, um, I think there's another chap on YouTube that's uh, spoken about this. So that's basically full droop, okay? That's fully open, fuel's gushing in 
through the needle valve, okay, through our in here and out. As the fuel rises, it closes the needle valve, okay, and that's where the fuel does no longer come in. Um, we need to adjust this travel so it's not too much or too little. Uh, this does again take a bit of uh, getting used to. Now if you look closely onto the edge of the needle valve assembly there's a little ball and that's ball spring loaded very very light okay you need to make sure that you're not uh, adding excessive load on that because that will just yeah so there we go that's open that's shut and that's me depressing it with my finger okay so that's fully open that's fully closed So, yeah, you need to have it. So if you, if I, if I do like that, I'm not going to measure it correctly. So I have to kind of have it at a degree, so that the little ball is not being depressed down like that. So I want to measure the gap now between the top surface here, all right, this top surface, and the bottom of the float. And to do that, oh yeah, this needs to be needs to be five mil five mil okay and we've got five mil engraved into our um, tool and six mil there for that's for other types of carburetors so we're going to use this area here so um, basically I'm gonna do something like that all right uh, I don't know if you saw that but this lifted the float up so that's not correct so you have to do this a few times to kind of get an idea of what is going on. Uh, like you'll have to run through it sort of seven or eight times. And this does look initial. My initial, um, 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 yeah. I think it's it needs adjusting. by going under it you just want it to be a snug fit this is a little too um, snug right yeah okay so what I need to do is I need to lift the float a bit and to do that I need to bend this little tang here and I need to bend that in a downwards direction, okay, which is a bit of a mission. All right. Let's have a look and see if that had an effect. did have an effect but it needs a little more is pretty perfect <sighs> yeah, it needs more what I'm noticing is oh. Oh, that's nice that's nice. Yep, that's done. Sorted. 
Now the 11 and a half mil measurement, which is basically the fully open measurement. So you fully open the float and then you measure the distance between here. All right, that is not as crucial as the smaller measurement. So this I'm gonna do with a micrometer. You can do it with whatever way you think. Now if that needs adjusting, the tab that needs bending is the one at the back in there. And to do that, you need to remove the float, which is a pain in the backside. So hopefully you will not need to do that. So let's get this, uh, get this chap out. Let's find 10, what is it again, 11 and a half. Do you really need to be that accurate? I suppose so 10, 11 and a half. All right. And that's the, that gap there. I think I've got this right. Let's have a look. That's fully open. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yes. Spot on. Okay, guys. So this is, if you're at home, you don't necessarily, well, see, this isn't very expensive, um, and it does give you peace of mind and confidence. Um, yeah, it's 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 good tool. You, you can do it with your own, like one of these, to get, you know, like a micrometer um, to set. Because, I mean, you know, when these get pulled out, if they're old and they get bashed around a little bit, you might get um, you might get an error in the fuel, okay? And if you don't know, you don't know. So it's best to know, eliminate uh, potential issues, okay? And also immerse this in some warm water or petrol to ensure that it's not leaking, no bubbles are coming out. Because if it is, it's useless. So uh, that's how you. Uh, set the floats on Weber DCOE carbs they you will need the um, you will need the correct uh, original Weber specification for your particular model of carburetor okay because they do vary and you want to get it right if you need any of these um, special Weber paperwork for old carburetors old Webers any of these tools just drop me a message either on the YouTube on Facebook on our website and uh, I'll point you into the right direction of where to buy it. All right, chaps, I'm gonna put this back together now. You don't need to uh, to see that. That's it. Boom, see you later.